Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Frostpunk, which is a cooperative post-apocalyptic kind of game. It's the late 19th century. The world went frozen. Society has collapsed and it falls to us to scramble towards the nearest generator, this great big thing. I know in bird's eye, perhaps not the best view for this uh, lovely mini. And we are establishing New London. So the environment's harsh. We don't have many people. They all need heating. They all need feeding. Things can and most definitely will go wrong. This is based on the video game Frostpunk as well. And if you are familiar with the video game and coming in from that, I think it does a pretty amazing job of replicating the feel, the decisions, the story, the tension of the video game. But if you're just coming in board game wise, we'll see everything as it happens. Before I get started, I would recommend you turn on the subtitles to the Klingon channel. Any mistakes I make will hopefully be noted up there. Although this is a vast game, although Steve, our goof guru, does an exceptional job. I think that this one in particular may get some things slipping through. There's a lot going on. That is kind of microphone meltingly hot in this room. I'm hoping that the theme will uh, cool me down somewhat. If you would like to support the channel and keep playthroughs coming as well, there are ways to support the channel in the description. There's Patreon, there's Ko-fi. Your support will be massively appreciated. It's how I'm able to do any of this in the first place. So there are loads of phases and steps and things to go through. We jump right in in the first round to actions. So what we can see at the moment is what we have discovered of New London. We are in a crater based on the scenario that we are playing. There's loads of different scenarios, different options. Certain things have been done in setup, like we know that there are wood deposits in these corners of the board. There's a coal deposit right up there in the corners where there weren't deposits. We've got tiles that have various resources on them that can be collected, or in the case of the trees, we can get a sawmill to cut those down and turn them into wood. We've got our great big generator that needs to heat things up to stop everyone from freezing to death and getting sick. So we're playing scenario number one, a new home. I'm aware that the text might not be the clearest that we'd like it to be. I've had to zoom out the camera basically all the way to fit all of these boards in. I will read everything out and hopefully you can make out stuff. I would just love it to be crystal clear. Hey, that's cameras though. So our first step of the scenario, are we alone? Civilization has fallen. We, the survivors, traveled in a convoy that split into several groups to increase the chances of reaching a functional generator. Our group succeeded. What fate has befallen the others? Lighting up a signal to guide the lost souls will help to answer that question. So we have two exclamation marks, two triggers for this scenario. In round four, we are going to go to different steps depending on whether or not we have built a beacon which is one of the buildings that we can build. And in round 11, we are going to put a new card face up in the scenario display. So that's a goal that we are working towards, build a beacon, along with the kind of more immediate goal, keep everyone alive, happy and healthy to the best of our ability. And where there are tons of other boards and things and icons and tokens and stuff everywhere, don't worry about it, we'll get to it. Let's just go through. So after the setup, we are in the action phase of the game where we can use our meeples. The number of meeples that we've got and the types are determined by our population. And this is determined by a society card, which you get to choose in setup. I am using the, not custom, but the print and play explorer difficulty, which is a lower difficulty than found in the usual game, which is brutally hard. It's still pretty hard. But maybe this will give us a bit more of a chance to, to see more of the game, to see me play a lot more of it. So we're going for Society 6, which tells us, We left Oxford, accompanied by an experimental automaton capable of many tasks. It carried a surplus of food and some building materials. We knew where our designated generator was and didn't expect any trouble. However, skilled only in academic disputes, our leaders lost their way and we burned through all our coal looking for the site. So that's why we have a ton of engineers, our lovely academics. Not that many workers, very few children. And these markers on the tracks, if you look above the population track, it tells you how many meeples of that type that you get. That's how we've got those workers. And we've also got an automaton, a man made of metal and machinery. We have a bit of brewing discontent. We have a little bit more hope, some active hope as well. The white means it's present, it's usable. We have a ton of food. We have 30 food plus more that we found on tiles randomly in setup. And we have a bit of wood that we can build things with. So in the action phase, we will mostly be putting these meeples to work on various things. We can remove snow and discover new tiles. We can gather resources that are on these tiles. The steam cores, wood and coal. We can deploy scouts to go on expeditions, but only after we have built the beacon building, which is you know, a bigger focus of this scenario, at least initially. We can construct buildings. 
we can use buildings we've already built and we can do special actions that might be on scenario cards and things like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to be an action. I'm going to send an engineer out to do this because it has to be an engineer. We have a building out here you can't actually see because of the angle of the table. Maybe we'll move the generator. Lovely as it is, it's in the way of our platform here. So our engineer can go out and they are going to pass a new law. The one I'm going to go for is going to be heated meals. People work harder when they are well fed. We will provide them with hot meals. Whenever you perform an action with a citizen meeple, you may spend two food to count that action as heated. And it's going to be very important. Actions can be cold or heated in this game. And if you make workers do cold actions, then they will get sick. People will get sick in this game, but you want to try and limit it as best you can. I do have a lot of food to start off with and not much coal, which you would usually use to heat the generator. Now this card tells me a few extra things. It's got an X next to law number three. We have a deck of future law cards. The first eight are all paired up. So because I have guaranteed the people heated meals, I will not be putting additives in the food for good reason, you know, make the food last longer. We can add sawdust to the meals to make them more filling, although not exactly tasty or healthy. I'm not gonna do that. So that's gone from the game. There is no option to do that anymore. There are also four more laws that are chosen randomly that are not paired up. We have a deck of law consequences as well. I need to find the two that are related to law four. I randomly pick one and it gets shuffled into our Dusk deck. Now this has got a card in called the Inevitable. That's always in there. Uh, it's got one random social dispute card from this pile. And now it has whatever consequence we are facing for guaranteeing the people heated meals. We've done the nice option of the two. So hopefully that will result in a good thing. We've also got this blue symbol with a plus next to it. This means increase hope. Whenever you have to increase hope, you can either activate a hope you already have that's inactive. Now we randomly got three because of the society card that we started with and the first one we drew was active. Unusually, I drew three justice. I would like more hope about though, so I am going to randomly draw one of these out. So that's going to be care and it comes out exhausted side up. But we do now have four hope tokens, which is nice, isn't it? And no active discontent just yet. So that's the first thing I've done. I've done an action and I have passed the law heated meals. Whenever you perform an action with a citizen, you can spend two food to count it as heated. Hopefully that's gonna help us stop people getting sick. Unfortunately, that action was cold. So that action took place next to the generator. We have a display over here that tells us what is heated and what's not for a lot of the actions in the game. So this is a yellow building. This shows the insulation level of that building. It's yellow. If the generator was this hot, it's gone over the line. It has heated all of the yellow buildings. Generally, it's not that high. We have these symbols as well that tell us things on the generator tile, things adjacent to the generator, and every hex, basically, are heated. So we could have heated this with just one coal. That would have put us over the line. It's whatever is the lower thing. So this is a yellow building that is on the generator tile. The generator just being that hot, which you can do with one coal, would have gotten us there. Unfortunately, we don't have that just yet. That's what I'm gonna do now though. So since they're cold, I have to make an engineer sick. It doesn't do anything just yet, but you know, that's inevitably gonna creep up. So now that we can spend food to put citizens to work heated, uh, let's have them go and get some coal. So I might as well put them far away for this, hunter. I? I am going to pop them, let's say, I say all the way out here. There is coal here. There's coal on the generator tile to go and collect. So I put them on the space. I gather two of the resource. It's coal in this case. It goes into our reserve. That's a cold action because you know, that's not heated at all. But I can spend two food to count the action as heated. So I'll tick my food down by two. We've now only got 34 food. But yeah, say, saying that all cocky now, it's not going to last. So with this coal now, we can chuck it into the generator at any point. It goes back to the bank and we move the heat marker up one space. So now any red buildings or anything on the generator tile are heated. Now these pieces will move up as the game goes on and they will be harder to heat as the weather just gets colder and colder. Now since we have a coal left over, I can spend this to activate my automaton. They always take a coal to use, but they can do actions. They don't get cold. So I think with them, I'm going to do an always cold action. 
which is remove snow. We're going to go digging. You know, this isn't just an empty abyss. This is just packed with snow. We've got no idea what's there. So we can either put two near or one far tile out. Near tiles are adjacent to the generator, far tiles are not. Since it's early on, I'm going to go for two near tiles. So I don't get to see what they are just yet. I just get to decide where they're going to go. Let's go there and there for now. And we reveal what they are and stack them up with stuff. So we have found no food. There can be randomly food on the tiles, but we have found some more trees and some coal and wood. So I had to pay coal to make that happen, but nobody got sick. Yeah, there's not quite enough space to lie these things down. You're supposed to be standing up, aren't you? But I'm bird's eye. I think we're going to construct next. Now, you can't usually use children to perform actions with, unless you enact a law that enables child labor. We haven't done that. But I do have these citizen cards, and these are an exception. I can use a child meeple to do this specific action. So this is uh, Jason Shock, and he can construct so I can put this meeple on the construct action, but it only gets to do two sub actions. Usually you get to do three things. Now, construction is constructing and dismantling buildings. We don't want to dismantle anything yet. We're just going to construct stuff. What can you construct? All of these things, not these tiles are down at the bottom. Certain laws might enable those particular buildings, but we can do all sorts of stuff. One thing that has to be on our minds early on in the game is shelter. People get sick if they are not in heated shelter at the end of each day. That is going to be on my mind. But to start with, I am going to build a charcoal kiln. This will let us throw in a wood to get four coal. That's going to be quite useful, I think. And I decide where I want to put it. You can put it on any empty space. These small buildings just take up one space. This is not a space. These two are anything on the tiles is. You can also decide to throw stuff away from the tiles. You don't have to harvest it all first. It's just you don't want to do that too much. You don't want to throw things away, do you? I'm going to pop that there. So that's going to cost one wood because it comes from this leftmost column. And I'm also going to build a workshop. So this is also going to cost me one wood. Still got three left. And this is a red building. This is quite insulated. I'm going to put it all the way out here because that's heated at the moment. Now, when you build your first workshop, you can choose one of the four available technologies. In the video game, you've got a great big technology tree and all of that stuff. In the board game, we have four available for our particular game. They all do very lovely things. Constructing planning lets you do more construction in one action, four things rather than three, and get some wood back for dismantling buildings, make things a bit cheaper, and make the generator more safe, get more stuff when you do hunting. But I'm going to go for the charcoal kiln upgrade. So we've got to spend wood from our supply to get coal. Great. But what about whenever you use a charcoal kiln, you can remove a tree from any tile instead of spending a wood. A bit wasteful because the trees can be turned into three wood at a sawmill. But I'm hoping this will work out for us. So it needs to go one, two, three, four rounds into the future. That's when we are going to develop the charcoal kiln upgrade. An action we can do at this workshop is upgrade buildings but we can also choose to bring that technology marker closer to us closer to the now building is always a heated action we don't have to worry about that there so i think i'm going to grab an engineer and the workshop needs an engineer it's got the little symbol in the corner i am gonna pop my engineer on that workshop and let's get to advancing that technology you've got two choices of action upgrade a building or bring the development marker over we could upgrade the charcoal kiln so it's more efficient. We would get five coal from a wood instead of four. I don't think that's a priority right now. There's no upgrade in the cookhouse. So I think we're just going to go for bringing the technology forward. One, two, so it's going to be available in two rounds time rather than four rounds time. My citizen card is gone as well for activating that. So the citizen could go and use this charcoal kiln now if we are prepared, as we are, to spend two food to heat them up so they don't get sick. I'm fine with that. Let's chuck a wood into the charcoal kiln and we get rewarded with four coal. So that's hopefully gonna help us for heating things in the future. I want more resources. I wanna build things. So at the moment we've got, what, nine meeples? The houses have space for two each. Yeah, we're not gonna get everybody heated at the moment, of course. But yeah, we, we wanna gather some wood. So we could just gather it on the generator tile for now. Oh, only one person can do that. Let's chuck a coal into the generator. So this moves up and now orange buildings and tiles adjacent to the generator tile are also heated. So you could go and collect me two wood and you're all hot and nice. 
you could go there and you're all heated up too. You can come and do three build actions and out of the houses, the tents only cost two wood, the bunk houses three, the houses four. So why would you choose the more expensive ones? Because weather events are going to happen. There's going to be a great big storm. Tents and stuff are going to get blown away. It's not going to be great. Uh, but for now, we have to think about our economy. I'm going to spend all six of that lovely wood building three tents. And I want these to be heated. That's kind of the, the crux of it as well as having space. So we're going to put these on the generator tile that should be easy to heat and... Oh, that's the other advantage as well. The, the other buildings are easier to heat and we'll have you adjacent. So that's a good chunk of our people that are going to be heated. We've got one engineer left to use. We haven't got many resources. I think we will, we'll just gather some more wood for next time. I think I don't want to heat up any more to go and gather a steam core or something. So there we go. We have finished our actions and the blurry player right here tells us that next up is the dusk phase. So first of all, if anything in the scenario display said in the dusk phase, we would resolve that now. It doesn't. So we need to draw and resolve a dusk card. So it's either going to be the inevitable, a random social dispute, or the consequence of our actions. Fear, it's the social dispute. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. If you have more active hope than active discontent, which we do, actually, brilliant. I'd, <laughs> I'd not forgotten that social dispute card was in there. You are allowed to look at it at the start of the game as well. Uh, so yeah, we did start with one active, but that's something you could do because that could get increased by various things that happen. So rather than drawing a new one, I might have wanted to make another one active. I've gotten lucky perhaps here though. So I do have this. I can either remove up to four stress cubes from the stress track. We don't actually have any on the generator stress track yet. Or I can gain food equal to the round number. Okay, so it's not a bad thing. But I gain one food. So after you resolve a social dispute card, you remove it from the game and you take a new one and shuffle it together with the Dusk deck and discard pile because some cards will recur. So still a one in three of seeing what happens from feeding the people heated meals. That's the Dusk phase. Then we have the Hunger phase. Now, first of all, we have our Hunger marker. This would normally be on zero. At the start of the game, though, I had to discard a Citizen card from my hand and uh, do the consequence that was in the corner. There's always a, a negative consequence for doing that. You've got to in setup, though, uh, and it was Gain 3 Hunger. So the first thing that happens is Hunger must be paid for. You must pay that three food no matter what. And then based on where the Hunger marker is now, you will get, uh, you know, if people still are hungry from previous rounds, you will get Discontent citizens will die yeah you want to feed your people next we feed citizens as indicated by the current round the current round tells us that children need to be fed here we have three children so we need to spend one two three food not a bad turnout for us but next round it's going to be engineers there's 23 of them we do have 27 food but what about the round after that then we have the night phase all the meeples that we placed this round go back into the supply you can choose to fuel the generator now because you want these shelters to be heated. And then you count the number of sleeping slots and for everyone that can go in a shelter, you lie them down, indicating that they've got somewhere warm to sleep. Everyone that hasn't got somewhere warm to sleep gets sick. So for every meeple that is uh, still standing, basically we're just going to have to work this out in our heads. We have nine meeples and six beds. So I think we're going to do one of each type. So that means another engineer is sick. The easiest way to do it. The automaton, of course, does not need shelter. The heat is a shelter, remember, because things on the generator tile or adjacent to the generator tile are heated. The heat marker is above that. Even though it's not above the yellow, it's the lower of the things that needs to be heated. And that's the whole first round. Now we move on to the second round where there are more steps. So we move the round marker forward. Next round, we will get our technology. There's no scenario trigger or anything like that. Then we have the morning phase. We need to resolve a morning card. Refugees. Faces that were once distinct are now bleak with exhaustion. Will we feed that flicker of hope still visible in their eyes? So we can either let them enter our city, gain three workers, two engineers, and a child. I mean, gaining three workers would give us another meeple. Two engineers wouldn't. One child wouldn't. You've got to go over the, you know, the line to put you into the next meeple section. And increase hunger by five. So we would have more mouths to feed, and they would come in hungry. So we'd really have to work on stuff. And then if you have active care, get a hope. If you have active greed, get a discontent. We don't have active of either of those. We do have a care, but it's not active at the moment. So we can choose that. 
So another meeple, but even more strain on the food, or send them away. Exhaust all your hope and gain a greed. I'm not going to turn them away. I think it's the wrong decision, but uh, it's one of the reasons I'm not very good at this game. Too idealistic. So we're going to gain those things, but we do not have active care or active greed. Uh, the card is resolved and removed. I don't want to lose my pupil's sense of active justice. Then it's the generator's time to shine or explode. At this point, we can choose to heat the generator some more because people are going to get sick. For every icon you can see between the heat marker and the cold marker, those people are going to get sick. So one worker is going to get sick at this point. The reason we might not want to put things in the generator is because this is the number of cubes we are going to put into the generator and increase its stress level. Cubes will fall out of the generator. It'll get damaged if there is ever loads of cubes coming out of it. If it gets damaged again, it explodes and we lose. So we don't want that to happen. And yeah, I think we're going to allow a worker to become sick. So there's now two. Next, based on the stress level of the generator, so it's telling us two there, we need to grab two cubes from the supply and drop them into the top of the generator that is itself a kind of cube tower. So drop them in the top, some fall through, carefully get the drawer out, and it tells you how many... Oh, only one came out. Two would have been fine coming out. And carefully slide it back, don't knock that cube out. So that goes on the stress track of the generator. We've got loads more space there. There are 10 spaces and then there's an overflow space. When stuff goes on there, that's when it's going to start getting damaged. We can also remove stress from various ways, uh, but there is a, a building that can remove stress from the generator if we start to get worried about it. It's not going to break down anytime soon, though. He says, tempting fate. Whether it broke down or not, though, the heat marker gets reset back down to zero. We're going to have to pay more coal to heat that up again on another day. Then it's time for the weather phase. We reveal a weather card and it's going to tell us several different things. So it tells us the cold marker is going up by one. The yellow marker is going up by one and the orange marker is going up by one. So it's still only one coal to heat the red buildings. But even to heat that generator tile, it's going to cost us an extra coal now which might be very affordable, but it's also going to make heating it cause more stress cubes, make it more likely the generator will break down. Then it's hunting traps. All of the hunter's huts have this symbol in the corner. The upgraded ones have two in the corner uh, and they would provide you with a food each, food for every symbol at the start of each day. Haven't done any of those yet though. Then expedition progress. When we have expeditions out, they will move that many spaces. We haven't at the moment. And then move the storm marker one space. The storm marker started on space nine. Uh, it's now going to occur in round eight. It's going to keep moving. We'll probably get it around five, six kind of time. The first storm's going to ruin all our tents. Then we have the preparation phase. We choose an advisor. In a multiplayer game, everyone's got an advisor. In the solo game, only I've got one. I showed the generator adv advisor. Uh, I can exhaust a hope to remove up to three stress cubes from the stress track. There are different versions of these for the explorer difficulty. I can't print things at the moment and yeah, I'm, I'm just going to use the ones that are in the game. So I've, I've kind of got a hybrid difficulty. The normal difficulty advisors, the easier difficulty society card. Maybe you'll be able to get the printed versions at some point in the future. So you can resolve this. I don't want to exhaust a hope. We're not that desperate to get rid of the stress cubes at the moment. So then we have to resolve sickness based on where the sick markers are. See, underneath the track, it tells us something that's going to happen. In this stage, the sickness marker would get flipped. In this stage, the meeple icon means that spent meeple uh, tokens get put in your player area, basically exhausting uh, some of your workers and much higher up. People just die. They also die, you know, they'll get flipped to the skull side. And if they get flipped again, someone will die also. And then we're back to the action phase. What do we do? So we need to start preparing for food. We have some nice coal and stuff ready to use. So I think we need to throw some in the generator. I think we've got to throw two in to make at least the generator tiles able to be used. I'm going to throw three in. Let's just get it going. So we've got all of this available to be used. And the workshop's red, so someone could just go there. But we don't really need to advance that. It's going to happen next round anyway. Oh, do you know what? Yeah. We will use the workshop because its first effect can bring this here. It can develop the technology for us. So we now have, we put this on its active side, we now have the charcoal kiln upgrade. So when we use this, we can just get rid of a tree instead of spending one of our precious wood. And we have to decide on another thing. I think hunting tactics. Yeah. So this is gaining an additional food for every two hunting symbols. One, two, three, four. We will need that. My second action, 
I'm not... Could we upgrade? Upgrading the charcoal kiln will take a wood. But we'll get five coal every time we use it. Now let's bring it forward. Because then next round we can do it twice and we'll unlock that next round as well. That'd be pretty good. So that will start happening from round four onwards. We need to think about building the beacon. Remember, that's three wood to do that. And we'll start unlocking expeditions as soon as we do it. Right, someone needs to activate the charcoal kiln then. We don't need an engineer to do that. So we can now get rid of a tree. Let's start clearing this tile off. A tree to get four coal. We have a stock of that again because we do want to use our automaton. I think, why not use them on an action that's always cold? So spend a coal and they can remove some snow. I think we'll keep going with the near. Just see what's about. I will fill up these two spaces. And they are going to be three wood and nothing, but that's a building space. And two wood and one wood. That's not too bad, though. I mean, a worker there can get those two wood, and that's an empty space next turn. Oh, we need a wood there as well, because you can't build where your person is. Maybe just throw that one wood away to have that be a space. Because we... Oh, I haven't done the step, have I? That you're meant to do at the start of the action phase. Make sure you've got the right number of meeples. I have an extra worker meeple, don't I? Because we crossed that threshold. So we've got 25, 30 food to resolve at the end of this round. We will be able to do the hunger, no problem. It's just, yeah, we've, we've only got 27 food. We need to start addressing that deficit as well as build new things. So I need two more tents at least. So we've got the wood for that. I think probably a hunter's hut. So I want at least one more wood before we build. Yeah, you come out here and gather. And then you can come build, which is always hot. So... Yeah, let's... Oh, we can only do one more tent, though. But we can we can afford to build a bunkhouse. And it's also orange, so it could potentially be a bit further away. Yeah, let's put you there. So that's three wood. The remaining tent, put you closer. That's another two. And then we could do a sawmill. We saw these down for three wood. We are burning through it. I know I want to use trees on the charcoal kiln, but we've only got one charcoal kiln at the moment. And do another build action next time. Yeah, last two wood we'll build this sawmill, and I'm, it has to be adjacent trees. So I'm going to get rid of this wood and put it next to this tree, and maybe more tiles we place later will have trees on them. So that's everything placed, the housing situation dealt with, I think. Yeah, 10 spaces for 10 meeples at the moment. So I want to have someone come and operate the sawmill, get rid of this tree for three wood. Oh, I want a worker available, though. Okay, then do a swap. See, I forgot that I've got a card that I want to activate later. Or you could have just had an engineer do that first build. Yeah, whatever. We'll just swap things around so we've got a, a worker available. I've got a card I want to play. I might as well do it now, actually. I'm only going to get to build one thing. So this is Chrissy Klinowski. Uh, if she's used to use a construct action, perform this action as normal, except you may upgrade a building by paying its upgrade cost and using two sub actions. So for one action, I'm going to build the Hunter's Hut for one wood. And then for the other two build actions, I can upgrade it. It's now got two icons on it. It's just taking up one space and it costs a wood to upgrade. So still got a wood left over. I think someone should go over there because you can activate it to get five food, four food on its own upgraded side. So that will help us a bit with the food situation and we'll earn a bit and a bit more when this starts kicking in. You know, hopefully it will spiral in that way. The only child card I've got at the moment is use the medical post or infirmary to cure two. Usually it would cure three, but a child can't usually do an action. So I think we're probably not going to have them do anything. We could enact a law, couldn't we? Now the child shelter and care house let us build lovely buildings, but they cost two wood to build and I've got rid of all the wood. And I've only got one worker left, unless we enact a child labour and I don't want to do that. I think we'll just go get some wood. We're short on wood now. Yeah, probably want to get a medical post built ASAP. So then the dusk phase. There's no scenario cards. We need to just resolve a dusk card, and it is the inevitable. Flip every sickness marker on its skull side to its syringe side, and for every corpse you have, gain a sick citizen. We don't actually start with any corpses. Every day we fight a bitter struggle against hunger, cold, and disease. There will be losses. Uh, that actually is okay. We haven't got any sickness markers on their skull side. Because when they get flipped from their skull side to their syringe side, someone dies. So that could have been worse. We have got five hunger, so we need to decrease the food by five. Engineers are getting fed 25 food. So basically we flip this from its plus 25 side. We have two food remaining. Uh, so it's going to be the workers next. And they there are 15 of them. 
which, yeah, there's going to be some hunger building up. We've got one hunter's hut where we could get five. We're going to get two at the start of the round. Hopefully, though, this will get enacted if we go to the workshop next time. And then if I can build another one, I won't be able to upgrade it straight away. If I could build another couple, then we'd be getting, like, six food at the start of every round at least. And we could do more actions doing it. Yeah, we'll see. Then the night phase, we get everyone back, but I I know, rather than standing everyone up and falling them down again, uh, we we have 10 meeples and we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 spaces for them, all heated as well. I'm just going to put them over here because it's near me and I can lay them out and get rid of this random tree that's hanging about. Okay, so the dawn phase, it's the dawn of day three. Let's resolve our morning card then. And it's going to be Dissidents. A rumour hits the streets. Supposedly there's another city, not too far away, more prosperous and advanced than ours in every way. A separatist faction forms, striving to migrate to this fantastic place. So, our choices. One, there's nothing out there. Anyone who claims otherwise is a danger to themselves and society. Institute house arrest. Place a spent worker token in the supply. So that's going to be one worker we won't get to use. Fulfill their demands and let them go, but they are never to come back. So if we spend two resources and lose two workers and add a card to the Dusk deck or indulging this train of thought might not be such a bad idea. Securing cooperation of another functioning city might prove invaluable. Add card 48 to the Dusk deck. I'm going to go with that one and hope that they're good. Usually don't work out, does it? But maybe they will be. So card 48 is in the Dusk deck and ready to come out. I want our you know, happy heated meals consequence to come out. Hopefully we'll enact a law this time as well. We've got wood, so we'd be able to build the nice building. Okay, generator phase. So do we want to fuel the generator? We're putting three cubes in it anyway, so I am going to chuck a coal in. It wouldn't have helped anything else be heated, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, we'll chuck a coal in. So only one person will get sick. So one child. So that's two sick people overall. We've got to get three coal and drop it in the generator. And that sounded like a lot came back out. And it is three. So there's still one hidden in there, isn't there? Okay. So they need to go up on the stress track. So might start to think about maybe possibly reducing that a bit and reset the heat marker. The weather card. So cold goes up. Yellow goes up, orange goes up, and red goes up this time. A food for every hunting symbol. We've got two hunting symbols at the moment, so we are up to four food. Uh, expedition would advance four spaces. The storm marker doesn't advance at all. Okay, that's quite nice. Preparation phase, we choose our advisor. Is this advisor? And uh, oh, in the preparation phase, I can do my call to rise. I might do this. So this is special for the solo game because you've got fewer advisors to choose from. Uh, so this can be played independently of your advisor card. Draw one, two, three, or four citizen cards if you have at least one, two, four, or six hope tokens, and then it's gone. So I do have four hope tokens. I could draw three citizen cards. It could be worth waiting for later to draw more. I've got to get two more hope out there. We could sacrifice food to do that, but I don't think it's happening. I'm going to draw three more citizen cards and see what we get. So who have we got here? Olivia Care Bear. Oh, can use the platform and put new laws out. Normally workers can't do that. And I could get plus one hope or minus one discontent. That's very good. Uh, Christina Wardrobe. Uh, use a building. They can use the medical post or infirmary and activate care or motivation. Quite nice. And Adele Kwapinski, uh, an engineer using the workshop, can perform three effects. Oh, wow. Okay, then. Brilliant. We might just burn through these. So I do have two coal. We can chuck two coal in the generator and make the red buildings okay. So let's get an engineer in the workshop. It's going to be Adele. So perform three effects. One, two, makes this technology active. Never been so technological. And I think we will do construction planning next six turns in the future. Five, six. And then the third action can be bringing that forward one. I am going to use a worker on the platform using my card and we can get an extra hope or minus one discontent i think an extra hope out the back and it's gonna be motivation nice uh, which law are we going to activate though so child shelter the child shelter building costs two wood to build it's basically a, a space that can hold four of your meeples but only children 
So it would be an extra space for them to sleep. We don't need that at the moment unless we've got a lot more children. Same as doing child labour. Morality aside, uh, I only have one child meeple. So doing it, losing a hope and gaining a discontent just to gain the use of one meeple that can only do gathering resources or use a gathering post. Not worth it in this game. I mean, spend a food fewer would be lovely. What about the care house, though? So the care house building will cure two or cure five if you exhaust a care token. I think, yeah, just the care house. And it's going to enable us to activate care, too. You know when I said that we <laughs> I wouldn't get to six? Uh, so we can either draw a new one out of the bag or I can just activate care. So I'll do that. We're going to do care house. So this isn't a paired one. This is one of the random extra four that we get. We will be able to use workers to take care of our sick. They should do a good job if they're the product of a caring society. So we unlock the care house building. It is orange, so it'll be a bit easier to heat. I think oof, there's only there's only one wood on some of these spaces. It's a bit of a waste gathering resources where there's only one. I'm going to pop it there because I, I can build it now. Basically, it costs two wood to build. When the law is introduced, you may immediately build it by paying its cost, which is two wood. So no problem. You can only have four laws, by the way, as well, so that's half my laws. And I need to get the consequences for law number nine. We need to randomly pick one. Quick, uh, left or right? Left? Good choice. So, <laughs> I should know which either of them do. Uh, so we'll just pop that in there, and that'll get shuffled in. You're supposed to shuffle it before you draw one, I think, as well. But yeah, we'll just shuffle it now. So, okay. Oh, that's not heated. Do we want to throw another coal? I haven't got another coal. Do we want to use two food, or do we want them to get sick? Generator tile isn't heated, is it? Do you want to do something different first? Like, say, maybe spend two food and gather there without getting sick. So we could chuck another coal in here and then that would be heated. Because then we would also have a coal to activate the automaton and they can go exploring. Do you want near or far? I'm going to keep going near. I'm going to see if we can get any more trees around this, because you can't see what's on them first, unfortunately. I'd love to see more trees. No trees, and no trees. A lot of coal, and another empty building space. That's nice. Just generally some more gathering. So what's heated? Just the generator tile at the moment. So I think, send someone to the hunter's hut to get five food. Seven of the 15 we're going to need. Someone's just going to have to get sick. Gather there, get sick, and then chuck that in the generator. See, so, yeah, I do want to clear the spaces off. It's just, is that efficient? Because couldn't we just go there instead and get rid of that tree to get four coal from the supply? I don't necessarily want to throw these coal away, but if we're throwing stuff away from tiles, there's tiles with one resource on that you'd throw away from first. Yeah, if someone's going to get sick, let's put them on the charcoal kiln instead. I think let's put someone on the care house, and we will... Use care up to heal five. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. Keep them down there. I want one of that coal in the generator so that adjacent tiles aren't cold anymore. We are putting four cubes into the stress. So maybe we want to remove some cubes. I need more wood. Storm is coming as well. Not like within a round though, is it? More hunter's huts we need. We need to sort out this food situation. Could just build three of them. We need to build the beacon. That's three. I think gather some more wood there. Get rid of that for three. Wood, because yeah, we're, we're running really short of wood now. What I should maybe have done is explore over to here, and then you can build the wall drill, which is just a space you can go to to get three wood, because there's a deposit in this corner or this corner. But we're closer to this one. Uh, maybe next round. So yeah, let's let's build now then with our final worker. So three builds. One's got to be the beacon, because that's going to get resolved at the start of the next round. And it takes up two spaces. So we're going to have to say goodbye to this wood. There's the beacon. And then, yeah, we'll use the beacon. So you get sent on an expedition. You can only have one active expedition until the... Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. Let's, let's stick with the food. I'll show, you, I'll show you exploring next round. So we'll be able to start expeditions, but that's going to have to be next round now. We could... I think the children, yeah, can only work in the medical post infirmary, so I think we might have to work on getting that built in the future. But we haven't got an urgent need of it just yet. I've been doing a pretty good job, I think, of stopping people getting sick. So that's the action phase. Dusk phase. Let's have a look at a card then. 
And it is going to be... Oh, I think, yeah, this is the consequence for our first law. The world is less scary with a full belly. It is no great discovery that young people have more energy, but they need fuel to have that energy. If we can provide warm meals for the children, they can help with removing snow. Place this card on the heated meals law card. Ignore the heated meals law card while this card is covering it. Whenever you perform an action with a citizen, you can spend two food to count the action as heated. You may spend three food to perform the remove snow action with a child meeple, and it counts as heated. So we need more food to keep doing this kind of thing, but... I mean, that's another type of worker that we've got that can happily remove some snow. We don't even have to enact child labour. They're happy to do it because of the lovely, lovely meals. We have no hunger, but we need to feed our citizens. There are 15 of them. We have seven food, which means we spend that seven food and the hunger marker goes to eight. That's going to need dealing with next time. Get, need to generate at least eight food. And the night phase, let's get our meeples back. We have the same number of meeples, so we know that we've still got space for them. As yet, the storm is coming though. And after three cold days, that is where we are going to have to leave it this time. We've passed some good laws though. Care homes, heated meals, we took in refugees. We're hunting for food, throwing trees into a charcoal kiln. We're never going to need trees, right? And we are about to find out what building that beacon is going to mean in the wider scenario. I hope you'll join me next time to find out what's happening and what other trials our small society is going to go through. In the meantime, there are hundreds more playthroughs on this channel. I hope you will enjoy some of them and you can subscribe if you want to know when the next one's coming up. There are ways to support the channel in the description if you were able to and you would like to. Thank you so much to everyone that does and I will see you for the next game. Bye everyone. <laughs>